Hey everyone, Kane here and in this video we're gonna talk about greater abilities that currently are in game. So before making the video I found the dragon with all six abilities and we're gonna just get straight into it. So the first ability which I would also deem probably one of the best abilities or greater abilities in the game called the dragon scale heart. The reason this ability is friggin overpowered is because it adds incredible amounts of tankiness to your dragon like it's it's not even like funny how friggin overpowered this ability is. Now it says it reduces all damage taken by 28%. Now as you know all of the stats uh, that like reduce damage taken and whatever they are total ass. And by total ass, I mean if you add 30% damage taken or reduction or reduce the damage taken 30%, this 87 value would turn to 90. So it would add 3% only. Uh, and that is turning 30% into 3%. So I'm not sure that that particular, um, I suppose, buff that you get in that ability is incredibly powerful. However, there are other stuff in that ability which we're gonna touch in just a second and that is 20 chance or rather 20% chance of healing damage taken. Now do keep in mind this is not 20% chance to heal, this is 20% chance to literally nullify the damage taken on your dragon, meaning if your Rufio jumps on your dragon and he procs the Leo Sprite, 20% chance that Leo Sprite doesn't do anything to your dragon. And if a Rufio doesn't really do anything to the dragon and the dragon just avoids like the swell, uh, not the swells, the Leo Sprite, the damage from Rufio a couple of times, Rufio ends up dying and your dragon surviving. And your dragon surviving pretty much can win you the fight just straight up if your dragon stays alive you can win the fight or high chances to win the fight if you lose your dragon the fight literally just scales down to the enemy's favor quite rapidly like incredibly rapidly like your field just starts dying and dropping like flies um, and the other thing about this ability as well is that increases so much hp and i do believe this 30 percent is close to true stats in general. I don't think it's true or it may not be, but I think my dragon increased like five mil HP when I had like 20, 25, I'm not entirely sure. And now I have my dragon with like 46 mil HP level 60, which is quite a lot for like, honestly, that is quite a lot for the dragon that I have. Even Reliquary is not increased in dragon's HP yet. And that dragon can have over 60 million quite easily whenever I do. And then the other stat in this particular ability reduces the chance of taking a critical hit. Now this is probably one of the crucial tankiness abilities or stats in this game as of right now. So before... We didn't know how good this one was because we couldn't get a lot of it and a lot of archers have a lot of critical value. But now when I raised my uh, frontline army to 77 uh, of this particular stat, it became incredibly tanky. So we like now know that this particular stat has pretty huge value in terms of survival or making your uh, army, dragon and etc. survive. So this ability kind of went up on the list quite far. And personally, I would suggest to get this ability as your first or even second, depending what you're going for in the game. Now, moving towards the second ability called Dream Breaker. Now, a lot of people would deem this particular ability like pretty good. They even select it first and whatever. Personally, I would say that this ability is one of the worst out of all the greaters. Now the thing about it is it has a pretty niche type of thing where it lands what it hits <clears throat> and if it does any good. I've played against a lot of dream breakers and the only time it would mess me over is when this particular ability 
lands on heroes which are low HP, basically like Cosmic Storm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So in that case, then it would really mess me over. The thing is, particular formations now don't even use archers, it's strictly heroes. And even if you would land this on your heroes, it doesn't really do incredible amounts in 60%. Sure, it does seem quite a lot, but uh, really, uh, honestly, I, I don't think that this is like that overpowered. At least in my own case, like whenever I would activate Valerie and I've seen this landing, it removed maybe 0 0.5, close to one attack per second. And still, my Valerie just exploded stuff, even against stronger guys. Now, sure, that kind of delayed the fight by a couple of seconds and whatever. How, however, I don't really think that this is one of those abilities that would improve you or return you stuff for actually getting it. Now, if you put this ability on your dragon, it can also screw over your events as well. Now... You would think that, hey, this ability does damage. How the hell can it screw your events? The thing is, you need to uh, have knowledge or know that whenever an ability reduces attack speed or movement speed, it in general reduces the other stat as well. Attack speed and movement speed are connected together. Meaning, if you reduce attack speed by 60%, uh, the army will start moving um, slower by 60% as well. And usually the dragon does this ability as it enters the battle or like a couple of seconds in. And in particular events, the enemy army is still moving. So if your dragon lands this ability and he has like another ability which would freeze or whatever, or do keep in mind that the dragon also has draconic abilities in affliction, right? So if you land that ability uh, on, let's say, the enemy ranged army, it can root, it can stun, it can silence that enemy archer or whatever, and it will stay in place while the other like 50% of the squad will walk forward. So do keep in mind, this can help you a little bit in PvP, but depending on stuff, if you have an additional dragon, this can screw over like probably quite a lot of your PvE content. So that aside, I would probably put this ability as your fourth to six uh, to select. Honestly, not really that great. It has uh, very niche places where you can use it and it can also screw over your events. Not really one of the best abilities for you to pick up. Now, Draconic Blessings. Also, quite a lot of people praise this ability as being like really good. The thing is, it affects your archers. Now, up until like 10, 11 million core, sure, human archers do a lot of damage. Sure, Akan archers can do a lot of damage. Majority of this game is just literally heroes. Like, if you don't make your field, uh, like, uh, scale off of your heroes, the archers are not going to win the PvP for you. I've seen Valerie's, I've seen Avril's, I've seen Rufio's, I've seen other heroes literally decimate the fields and even decimate the archers. So going for something like this as your first ability is not really advised. Now, it will help you out in PvE content, it will help you out in PvP, and it doesn't have any negative, or rather negative, effects. So this ability kind of makes the list as like from second to perhaps fourth to select on the list as of right now. Now, I've made this kind of range because there are different formations and different uses for every ability. Uh, if you're using archers or formations which use archers, this can make the archers tanky. It provides attack speed, damage mitigation, and also increased damage dealt. And these abilities that increase damage dealt can be pretty friggin' decent in terms of adding towards the damage of your archers. However, do keep in mind this doesn't affect the heroes. And if it doesn't affect the heroes, um, it's not really that good comparing to another ability on the, uh, or rather another ability that you're able to get, which is why it makes uh, up to uh, the number four or close to four to select. 
Now, moving towards the first, uh, or rather fourth, uh, called the Dragon Shadow. Now, this ability is similar to Dragon Scale Heart, but a lot weaker. The thing about this is it has uh, an HP shield on your dragon, which does seem quite a lot. Um, and then it has uh, every few seconds increases evade and damage reduction stacking to 40% on level 100. The thing is, I've mentioned the, um, I suppose, damage reduction or reduced damage taken, basically same thing. Uh, and 40%. For all we know, can add only 4%. You know, we don't know the calculations. We don't know how this uh, stuff is added up. So this ability can be good. This ability can be complete trash. So honestly, this particular one would make the list towards like rank 5th, maybe rank 6th to even pick up. If you would even need this particular ability. Sure, it helps with dragon survival. Sure, it can be okay, but again, damage reduction, it's, it's very, very hard to actually know on a scale of how useful this ability is because of this one particular stat not really being that good or that useful in terms of providing a lot. So this is one of the weaker, greater abilities in my own eyes. Except, of course, for the shield, which probably is the only reason why this particular ability can be pretty good. Now, moving towards the uh, newest ability called Void Eater Armor. So, this ability acts something similar like Noble Blood, providing an aura of reducing damage taken of all friendly melee units by 15%, but this one also reduces the magic damage taken. Now again, depends how much this 15% adds, whether it's 15% or whether it's 1.5% or something like that. So it can be total ass or it can be pretty decent. Hard to test, hard to know. Now I've changed my dragon uh, from uh, Azure to Ruby and that 15% physical resistance, like I didn't lose almost anything. Though given the fact that I've upgraded my frontline, they already started stalling more than when I had uh, like the Noble Blood and Azure Dragon. So I'm not entirely sure if this 15% would even add a lot. Of course, like 1 or 2% bonus stats, of course, they're gonna make your frontline slightly tankier. However much the 2% would make your frontline tankier. Um, but again, really hard to judge how these percentages of damage taken or reducing damage taken work. It's really, really hard. Uh, but this particular ability also grants your friendly melee unit shields based on their own uh, HP. Now, uh, I've thought this particular ability before granted based on dragon's max HP, then this ability would probably be friggin' overpowered. However, this ability, if you get it, then you would be putting your dragon in very awkward places, touching as many frontline army as you're able. Now, the thing is, the dragon usually is currently on the burst side, or closer to the burst side. Meaning, uh, depending where you place it, you either would be placing on stall side, and which is really bad, uh, and then if you don't place it on the stall side, it's gonna touch only one frontline squad or one melee squad, and that is a total waste. And if it's a total waste, it kind of drops down on the list of abilities to select. Now, sure, this first one, 15%, can add quite a lot, but in, in the grand scheme of things, if you would only be getting the ability for just this 15%, then that 15% may only perform as like a value of 2%, which again, this uh, reducing damage taken stat or whatever just scaling down to almost nothingness i mean this ability becomes almost useless right and just one squad of your uh you know, front line just getting the shield means almost nothing it, it, it's not going to help you out if the, the heroes do incredible amounts of damage like 10 15 percent hp damage per proc or whatever depending what you are and even in aoe so honestly, this ability turns to, I suppose, from 4th to 6th to select, depending 
on this particular stat and what kind of a formation you have. I expected more from this, but in the end, this particular ability kind of disappointed me in terms of uh, what it provides at level 100. Now, the last ability on the list called Aura Blast. Now, this is one of the two abilities which I would suggest for people to take up first. The reason for that is the buff or the debuff it provides on the enemy units it can be used both in pvp and can be used in pve as well now do keep in mind it helps both your archers and also your heroes so 50 uh, rather 15 percent plus 20 percent here turns to 35 damage taken or rather 35 percent damage taken on enemies hit from both your archers and your heroes now that is even more damage um let's say increase than the draconic blessings given the fact the majority of your damage should be heroes or will be heroes in more than 80 percent of the formations in the game uh, depending of course uh what kind of a stage you're in what kind of formation you have and all of those nuances and this ability kind of is required to make one of the easiest to make lich formations which uh, putting your dragon frontline on the burst side can literally clear people even like 2 million core above you even their stall sides with artifacts and whatever in quite a few seconds and like pretty fast like this particular ability just adds so much on your field that it is too hard to even miss out or not select as like the second or first ability depending if you need tankiness or not so this is why this particular ability goes on like the top top ranks in uh, let's see my own list because it provides so much it doesn't screw over literally anything it doesn't have negative effects it only has good effects and also it can provide you a lot of stuff in terms of pvp pve all that kind of stuff a lot of formations your dragon becomes overpowered again i'm praising this ability because i thought it was pretty bad whenever it came out sure that 15 percent or whatever seemed low 35 also seemed low but then when people started exploding my stall side in like 15 seconds 20 seconds then i kind of realized how friggin like overpowered this particular ability is and whenever i got it i started doing something similar so i have the aura blast and i also have the dragon scale heart and those are the two abilities which i put very highly on top of my list as the first or the second the third ability i would be getting if i would not be getting the next one uh, would be highly likely uh, draconic blessings the reason for that is it has no negative effects and because it has no negative effects i can use that ability for pve content uh, i plan to go uh, rakan and all that kind of stuff and it would help out the archers to do more damage and all of those kinds of things like if an ability doesn't have negative effects if an ability provides quite a lot the ability is pretty friggin good and that is uh, i suppose on the list of things you should think about is the pros and the cons of each ability providing on your field now a lot of people that would select the dream breaker right they don't know that it will proc the draconic affliction stuff which would uh, root stun and whatever um, anything that gets hit now do keep in mind that if these particular abilities proc, they don't proc at the same time. If you proc two of them, the proc will be like a, uh, a root. After the root finishes, it would stun. And after the stun finishes, it would apply another debuff. From what I've seen, sometimes the ranged units, they don't even move for like 10 seconds. So it's very hard to judge, very hard to know how bad the dream breaker can make your pve content so do keep that in mind anyways that was pretty much my list and going through all of the greater abilities providing my thoughts all that kind of stuff hopefully you enjoyed this video hopefully you found it useful and if you did do hit that subscribe button it would help me out a lot
Thanks for watching, take care, and stay safe out there.